Welcome to Embrace the Spiritual Podcast. Join friends Michelle and Dawn as they share tips on how you too can open your heart, raise your vibration, and reclaim your sovereignty. Hear what they have experienced and overcome in their spiritual journeys while navigating this expansive spiritual multiverse. Discover how they transform their soul lessons from ordinary into extraordinary. Follow, subscribe, and share. Embrace the spiritual on all podcast streaming services, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Go to EmbraceTheSpiritual.com for additional content and a list of upcoming episodes. To book an aura regression or raw Reiki session, contact Dawn on her website, alchemy-sacredsound.com, and Michelle on her website at energeticembrace.com. Welcome back. We are episode two, season two, and today we're talking about manifesting. And I just want to touch, I hope you've listened to episode one, where we talked about spiritual growth and awakening and things that you can uh, recognize when you're in those phases. It's not necessarily an ongoing thing, but it's important that you recognize those cycles or periods of growth because those may not be the best times to manifest. You may end up manifesting what you don't want because you're already in a state of flux with maybe what you're experiencing in your growth phase. So it's really important to go back and listen to that first episode and just check in with yourself. And maybe once you come through that phase or that growth period, you're going to be ripe for manifesting. So you've cleared a bunch of stuff. And manifesting, I know a lot of people have heard about the kind of big name book and movie that's out there about manifesting, but I want to put a little different spin on it. I would say one of the foundational pieces with manifesting is conscious languaging. So we did an episode in season one about conscious languaging. And the reason that is so important is the words that you use and the thoughts that you put to what you're manifesting are so important because if you're not clear, how is the universe and the collective consciousness supposed to decipher what you are saying? They don't take what your meaning is if you maybe say one thing but mean something else. The universe really responds to energy. The core of it is energy matches energy. If you're coming into manifesting in a low energy vibration, it's going to be more difficult and you may not get what you are looking to manifest. There's so many elements to it. So, you know, I don't want to just give you a big laundry list, but I really wanted to focus on conscious languaging as the first item from my perspective in what I do for manifesting. Because if you use words like hope, wish, want, those are kind of wishy-washy words. Oh, I hope I get this. Well, do you want it? Do you need it? Do you feel like you deserve it? That is the energy that the universe is looking for as far as manifesting. You need to embody it. You need to feel it. You need to see yourself if it's living. Maybe you want to live on a yacht and sail the world. If you can't envision or imagine yourself doing that, how do you expect the universe to help co-create what you are looking to manifest. And we always talk about the things that we want and want to create. I want to live like this. I want to do that. And then a friend sent me something. And as I was reading it, I realized, oh my goodness, all the people who are reading this are going to manifest exactly what she is saying because it was putting a negative spin on it. And I sent a message back to my friend. I said, I don't consent to this. I'm like, this is those trick manifestations that they want you to believe. You know, you always hear about these scare tactics. Oh, there's going to be a bad event happening and you all have to prepare. That is them wanting you to manifest. So are you going to live your life by somebody else telling you how to live your life with these things that we read? Yes. You know, when you read a sign that says work zone ahead, yes, that's going to happen. But when you're reading something like those Mercury and retrogrades, what if Mercury and retrograde is actually like a super manifester or super lesson learning thing. And they're just tricking you to be afraid of it and to be wary of what is happening. Because they always have like, these symptoms may include, but what if they didn't have to? And because you're reading that, you're just manifested to that exact formula that they put out. So I've stopped believing I'm doing the opposite. So I believe that Mercury and retrograde is a beautiful transforming thing that we can use 
as our beneficial blueprint of upping ourselves during those intense spiritual times. And I just realized like, what about Friday the 13th? What if that's actually a beautiful, it's supposed to be a spiritual sacred day. And instead of taking that spiritual sacredness and we're letting these opposition control us through it. I'm getting chills as I'm saying that. So I have a feeling that I'm hitting a core that is really true. So just think about how we've been living our lives, this programming that we're trying to break out of, and where do you want to go from there? Do you want to manifest these things that other people are telling you? Or do you want to create the best world that you can live in? I love that you brought up Mercury retrograde, because honestly, I never know when it's happening. For that very reason, I don't buy in, or I don't, I shouldn't say buy in, maybe the buy in is the right word. I don't allow myself to be influenced by somebody saying it's Mercury retrograde, expect every, you know, shit to hit the fan, so to speak. I usually don't know it's Mercury retrograde till I see someone say, oh, thank goodness we're out of Mercury retrograde. And because if you go into that time period expecting things to go wrong, guess what? You're manifesting it because manifesting is just energy matching energy. If you're putting out the energy that things are going to go wrong, the universe will go, all right, you're already expecting things to go wrong. I'll give you what you're energy is focusing on. And the other, um, maybe it's a little bit of a pet peeve that I have when you see these things used to be emailed out a lot, of course, more on social media now was forward these to 10 year friends and you will money will come your way. Uh, No, that's honestly somebody, you know, spamming looking for access to people's information. I don't do those things. That's not how I manifest things. And those are kind of like a fart in the wind as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you know, they're going to, you yeah, better luck manifesting with that than you do forwarding something to 10 people. Exactly. And why would it be this chain letter that's affecting your life? You know, why can't you have it be an everyday thing of manifesting, of bringing in what you want, what will help the collective? Because I work on a collective level. I always, me and the collective and whatever healing needs to happen for that day. Because I know that there's a lot of healing that needs to be done on such an energetic level that I can work it into my everyday manifesting for myself. And in, in the end, it does benefit me when you do that sort of work. It's just part of something that I do every day, and I love it. I can feel the energies change and turn higher and higher. So I hope that everybody learns. And I do have to say, giving a shout out to Aurora, her class is amazing. I finished it, but I need to go back and do it again. But she really does hit the nail on the head with her manifestation course. If you are looking for a course that really gets you in tune with the creator beings that we are. And we can throw a link on our embracethespiritual.com website for that course if anyone's interested. It's really cool. It looks at manifesting different than maybe what we've traditionally thought of. So I'm glad that you brought that up. Both Dawn and I have taken the course, but yes, it's once you take the course, you have full access to it whenever you want and you can go back. I'm going to go back and watch it again. And I think one of the important things that you mentioned, Dawn, is about the day to day. So we typically think of manifesting as some large event that we need to manifest, we can manifest daily. It's all about our thoughts that we have daily, our actions. Yes, you may be trying to manifest a trip or a new house or a new car, whatever the the object or thing that you want to manifest, you can still do things daily that move you towards it. So you're co-creating with the universe and the collective consciousness for whatever you want to manifest, but you still have to do your part. So it's not like you just say, oh, I'm going to manifest, you know, my own private island and then sit back and wait for it to happen. Well, If you truly feel that that is something that is going to enrich your life, then you'll likely be doing things to move yourself towards that. So we do have a part of it. Manifesting can be really beautiful and magical. And part of what we can do is surrender. Once we identify whatever we're going to manifest. So my example is we were talking about selling our home. 
And I just didn't feel good about selling it and buying something else at a high price because the markets were really favorable for the seller's perspective. And so I wasn't on board with the idea just to buy something else to live in that I wasn't going to be happy. So you could see that initially I was thinking kind of about the how, how it was going to happen, what it was going to look like. And once I was able to surrender and had a new idea of, okay, maybe I'm thinking we're moving in a similar location, but I hadn't ever thought of moving somewhere completely different. And until I opened myself up to the idea that I'm okay selling, if we go somewhere different where it's a lower cost of living, as soon as I did that, I happened to be at a course and the round table that we were introducing ourselves, I remember saying, we made a decision, we're going to put our house in the market. And I was at a course for three weeks and I made the declaration in that course and didn't even really realize, I think intuitively, I, I said it and, and it wasn't anything necessarily intentional, but it was in the right energy. And I said, our house is going to be sold by the time I get home. That was three weeks. Wasn't being arrogant about it. I just, my in, intuition just felt like that's what was going to happen. Literally the day, the night before I was driving home from this course, all of the conditions got lifted on the offer that we had received. We received an offer within nine days and the conditions were released the day before. So it literally sold before I got home. So that's just one example of manifestation because I didn't say we're selling to move to this home. I didn't know how it was going to happen because at the end of the day, in manifestation, and I will repeat this, in manifestation, the how is none of our business. How it happens is not our concern. Our concern is to put out to the universe, to the collective, what we would like to achieve or have. And the universe will figure out the right way in your highest good that that's going to happen. Because we may think it goes from A to B to C, and it might go A to G to H <laughs> down to C. The road might not look the way you think it's going to be. And if we get focused and have the expectations that it's going to happen a certain way, we're actually blocking the flow of that manifestation happening at all. We could be completely taking it offline. So be open, be okay. That's not the part we get to control. So we get to control our thoughts and our energy that we're putting towards what we're on a man. That's where it starts and, and ends. The universe will co-create it with us, matching that energy vibration. And the universe knows what our soul blueprint looks like. It knows maybe the house we were going to buy was meant to be in a completely different country. Once you're open to it, and maybe that's where I would have needed to be. Who knows? I was okay with however that happened. And I think that's really, really key. And I think a lot of people get caught up with a timetable because sometimes it's just not time for that time manifestation time. We had a rental we were trying to sell, and I think it took almost a year to sell. And then my husband didn't want to invest right away because we had been looking and it just didn't feel right. We were looking in North Carolina. Then I had a beautiful Akasha greeting with Michelle and she's like, you're looking in the wrong place. So we started looking in a three state span, which he always liked Tennessee. I just never felt that it was, I need to be in the mountains. The mountains have always called to my heart in a way that I can't even describe. And I always thought it would be the Blue Ridge Mountains, but actually I don't know what mountains. Uh, we did find a place and it was not even anywhere I was looking. And I literally was driving to look at a place in North Carolina. I was following the full blue moon of in August all the way there until I lost her in the mountains of, I can't remember if it was Pennsylvania or if it was West Virginia. All I know is I was following a truck and going, I hope he knows the road better than I do because I can't see anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I followed him. And as I'm going through, you know, state after state, the Sound of Freedom song came on and I'm on these country roads in the middle of nowhere. There's no shoulder. And then I see a sign that says, watch Sound of Freedom. And the most powerful grief that I've ever felt 
overcame me and I just started bawling. And I'm, of course I have a car behind me. There's no place to pull over. As soon as it was safe within two minutes, I pulled over and I just cried like I've never cried before in my whole entire life. And I texted my husband and he pinpointed that location. And we had started looking in there. And with less than a week later, we found a place and I went to go see the other house and it was nice. I felt a lot of uncertainty in there. And I asked to be left with to talk to the land and the land said that told me that we could get the place, but my husband would be unhappy because there would it had too much water flowing through it and things grew like you would not believe. In two years, everything was overrun with vines and stuff. And they said he would be more frustrated feeling like he was constantly tearing down since it had like 21 springs on it, which I did not think it was even possible. And on the the way there, I had wanted the realtor to go look at this place. But if she had, I would have never driven through that town and felt how I did. On the way home, I felt it was feeling really good. And I thought, you know, this was really an excellent trip. And the only thing that could make it perfect because the sun was setting was if an, I saw an eagle because they're kind of rare in New York State. And what flies by within five minutes is an eagle as the sun is setting. And the eagle is like this beautiful pink color. So I knew that we needed to switch states and look at this other place. And as of right now, that's where we were looking. Wow. I just love that story. When you were telling it to me when after it happened, and I love that we're including this story in manifesting because it's a perfect example of when we release our expectations around manifesting. So at the end of the day, Dawn and her husband were looking for a property. They, you know, the mountains, the water, lots of um, foliage and stuff. So they had an idea of kind of what they were looking for. But when you release the expectations of what it looks like exactly or location or timeline, like Dawn said, we miss those little signs that tell us we're on the right path. Because the universe will do that. When the manifestation is happening, of course, you've got the end result. But there's always signs along the way that we tend to miss. And we think it's not happening. Like, why hasn't this come to fruition yet? Well, if you've gotten some of those signs, some of those signs could say, uh, this is not something that's in your best interest. So in Dawn's case, like having the sound of freedom and then seeing the sign and the eagle, like here's all these things that are saying, yes, this is the right move for you guys. All positive. You could get the negative signs that say, I know you really want this, but it is not right for you. And so in Don's example, were all of the springs and the water and the, it'd be constant maintenance. So there was tons of signs that showed them basically it was a dead end to keep going that way, so to speak. So signs are really, and maybe we need to do an episode just on signs that you can experience, the, those subtle signs that we don't think of. It could be an animal that you rarely see, like Don said, an eagle and New York State, which they don't see very often. So put it out to the universe, but make sure you're observing what's going on around you so that you know it's on the right track or not. And if it's not, it's okay. Because not everything we want to manifest is in our highest good. And so just because we think we want it doesn't mean it's going to come true. So I want to put that out there as far as an expectation perspective that we think we might want something because we have a specific idea of how it looks. And we're actually blocking ourselves off from, you know, maybe that feeling we're looking for in, in happiness and being somewhere. And we're missing where it could be somewhere completely different. And I think that's a good point of it, things aren't going to work out. So with my job, it's a lot of, well, usually it's a phone call, but sometimes it's a text. And I actually got offered a job, but the, the, text was so confusing. I've never met this woman. And she started texting me. I actually thought it was one of my old bosses who had changed their number. And when I asked who it was, because I would like to know who I'm talking to, she didn't answer the question. And I ended up sharing with some of my friends who have been doing this as long as or longer and said, hey, do you guys recognize this number? Because this person is offering me a job. I have no clue who it is. And when I asked who this person is, she never responded. From that, I just thought, 
is this how I would want to run a business? Because I feel like I'm an independent employer, even though I'm accepting a job working for somebody else. The, the job just felt wrong to me. And then she ended up calling somebody that she, that knew her phone number and talking to her. So she had more a clue what was going on with the job than I did. So I would, you know, text her every once in a while, do you know what's going on? It's been a week and a half. And then I get a text going, oh, can you meet me on Tuesday? The job is starting. And actually, if I had taken that job, I would have never gone to North Carolina. So I said no, because it just didn't feel right. And I just told them that, yeah, I'm sorry, I had accepted another job. And in my mind, driving to another state is another job. <laughs> She doesn't you don't have to know the details and my friend worked that job for one overnight and then the guy got put in a hospice and she was like you know you are so right not accepting that job because now I have to start over and keep looking we usually in our line of work we have multiple jobs so I only have two patients right now and I work under 20 hours usually you work 40 plus hours but with you know, taking care of my household and my family. And you can hear my daughter clacking dishes in the background. Thank you. <laughs> uh, since I am in my living room, <laughs> uh, my apologies for the <laughs> ASMR. Hey, everyone's got to eat. <laughs> I know. Well, I could go up to the studio, but I worry about the sound because it's a bigger space because I know you had a problem with the echoing. Yeah. And we have enough stuff here that it takes it uh, into consideration. Yes. Yeah. So another thing that I want to bring up is a story about how my husband and I met. Because even though we don't kind of think it is manifestation, but it's still a lesson in listening to your intuition as part of the process. So just as Dawn said, she listened to her intuition about, you know, kind of questioning this didn't feel right. So even though we want something, we might want a job or want a relationship, doesn't mean we have to accept what's being put in our path because maybe there's a lesson in that for us around boundaries or trusting our intuition. So make sure that that's part of the piece when you're looking at going after something in your life. So when I met my husband, of course, back in the day, I mean, we had the landlines with answering machines. So I'm dating myself a little bit. So for you younger folk that what an answering machine, he was nervous to call me and it had been a couple weeks. And of course, I'm thinking, like, what's going on? And at work, I was asked to fly two hour time difference. So fly a few provinces away, we we're buying little companies, and I was supposed to go on site for they thought a couple weeks to look at these companies that we were going to purchase to see if it was going to be a good acquisition. And you know, we were a small enough company at the time. And intuitively, something told me not to go. So I actually went to my boss and said, I don't think I can go. And I mean, I literally was probably putting my job on the line, he could have probably said, if you don't go, then, you know, we'll find someone else, you know, find a new job kind of thing. But thankfully, they didn't. And somebody else went and ended up being there I think over three weeks. So I listened to my intuition about not going. And sure enough, my husband had called during that time I would have been away. And of course, back then, I can't remember the answering machine. Some of the answering machines, you could call your phone line and listen to your messages remotely, but some of them didn't have that functionality. So I would have been gone for three weeks. He would have called and then not heard back from me. And it probably would have just gone by the wayside. But I stuck around home, he called, we went on our first date, and that is 28 years ago, and we're still together. So you never know what could be put in your path as potential obstacles. You know, maybe there's, a, like I said, there's tests in there, and the universe might be saying, do you really want this? I'm going to throw something in your way that might divert you. And if I would have done that, I could have missed out, and I wouldn't have my children that I have today. So that ripple effect of that decision was pretty big. It would have changed a lot of lives had I not made that one decision. So it's okay. It might feel uncomfortable, might go, holy crap, like there was a little bit of fear initially that I could lose my job for saying no. And, and I just stayed with the resolve that I knew there was a reason that it wasn't supposed to go. I didn't know why yet. And 
I just stuck with that. So obviously I'm really happy I did that, (laughs) but you can have what you want. Imagine it. The other thing I hear from people around manifestation is I'm not good at visualizing. So there's some people that are really good. You know, they want a house. They can picture what it's going to look like. But guess what? Use your imagination. That is all visualization is. You are imagining what it could look like, maybe based on something you've already seen. So don't think that you have to be some clairvoyant or have some special skills to do this. Just imagine, feel it, embody it. If it's a beach vacation, imagine yourself laying on that beach, reading a book, whatever, swimming in the ocean, but just feel yourself doing that and know that you deserve things. Because a lot of times people go, I really would love that. And then they kind of question themselves. Don't question yourselves. As soon as you introduce doubt, then you're essentially taking back what you're looking to manifest. So since I didn't know what our property or whatever would look like, I always have felt it in my heart. And I feel I felt the pull. And that's why I ended up leaving the day I did because I just felt that and I only had like a limited time since it was a 24 hour trip of driving there, visiting the property for about two hours and then driving back because I have three to four days during the week where I cook, I do household chores. And the day that I left was the day that I had to leave. So I think I left on a Tuesday because Wednesday was the full moon and I was back Wednesday evening because Thursday I had something going on that I had to be part of. So when I manifest things, sometimes it's like, you got to go now, you better move, let's go. (laughs) And that's funny that you tell told your romance story with your husband, because that's literally how my relationship was with my husband. We were in art classes together. He was dating somebody else. She realized that he was falling for me. So they broke up amicably. And I went to a party on, since he was almost a leap year baby on 228.28. I won the prize because it was, you had to buy him a gift that was $2.28. And I being, um, a smart ass, <laughs> uh, put in a, I can't remember what it was. I made this little certificate. He, you know, he could have $2 and 28 cents worth of kisses. Well, I didn't tell him that it was going to be Hershey's kisses. <laughs> so I was like, Oh, we have a winner. And I'm like, here you go. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> we did end up kissing later that night. Cause my friend, uh, we were going to, I think it was about a 40 minute drive and she was on a time schedule. So she was my ride to get back to college. So we did a quick kiss before he left. So that was in February. He uh, proposed to me on my birthday in April and we were married July 25th. So and we've been together for, we'll be 28 years next year. Amazing. You know, and it's, it's one thing to have signs when you're on the right track for manifesting, but the other thing when you know you're on the right track manifesting is things happen quickly. Doors open quickly. Sometimes doors close quickly. It's just, if you were to write the story of how, like even when we sold our house and how quickly everything happened, when we made the decision to sell, usually the videographer, the person that does all the drone photos of the property, they would be busy for two weeks out. They happen to have a cancellation for that week. So we were able to get all the photos done for the house and we basically listed it, did the photos, and he did all the work in the house to get it kind of show ready, I think within four days. That would have normally been a minimum two to three week process of making the decision to sell, get the house ready, get all the photos ready, get it listed. And within that same three t- three week time frame, we had an offer and conditions were released. So the saying you can't make this shit up is so true that it will happen quickly on those things that are really for our highest good. And it feels so cool when it happens because we didn't have it on a timeline. We didn't have things happening in a certain way or plan it out. Sometimes it's great when we are planners and plan things out. But when you plan life out to structured, we miss out on the opportunities for the universe to flow in other things that might enrich our lives in ways we have no idea about. So I know there's lots, I have lots of friends that are, are planners and 
You know, we just had some friends out this past weekend that she loves to plan and it makes her so uncomfortable when things don't go to plan. But there's such great opportunities that can present themselves when we aren't fully planning our lives. Yeah, I just love going by what feels right in that in the moment. You know, as you're talking, my daughter popped her little head and she's like, wait, you guys dated for less than six months and you were and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so right. when it feels right, you know, I mean, yes. I have two beautiful children because we decided not to be part of the social norms. And that's how we've always kind of been. Like we didn't grow up with the kids watching TV. We have always been more artistic and more creative. And we've always held our kids to a different standard than their peers. So it has always worked for us doing what we do and what we love. And we've met wonderful people along the way. And I wouldn't change it for the world. And that's what manifesting is about. It's almost like a lifestyle, but you can't put your finger on it. Because even if something, you know, not perfect happens, you know that you're doing the right thing. My daughter, my oldest got into a really bad car accident, but it happened on the perfect day. During when it was happening, I said, this is the perfect time. My husband was off from school. I was off from one of my jobs at that time. And there was a bad accident and she had totaled her car it was she had a i think it was a whiteout and it was also black ice and we were able to be there for her my husband and i both took separate cars i was able to get her into the chiropractor because they wanted her to go on the ambulance but i know that she just needed to be looked at because um, I felt that her neck was off and it was it was true. She had, uh, and she was also because the adrenaline rush, she was shaking, which is, you know, a sign of shock, but she was able to talk. I'm sitting in the front seat with her and I was raking her. Even on the car ride, I said, don't worry, it's all gonna be fine. This is the perfect day to have an accident. Your dad will take care of that end. I'm like, we're just gonna take you to where you need to go. And it's going to be all okay. And it was. So even in those moments where you think, oh my goodness, this is horrible, just staying that that calm and know that everything is going to work out. And that's how I've always handled situations, even with my clients or in restaurants. I had a gentleman faint uh, because he was overheated. And you sometimes you need to be that calm in that storm and know that everything is going to be all right because nobody else has faith except for you. But you know it's going to it's all part of a greater scheme. So for whatever reason, that man was put in my life and I don't even know because I never saw him again. I was there for him. So I still think about it every once in a while and I wish him well and his family. Beautiful. As we wrap up this episode, a couple practical things you can do. Start small, manifest little things. So we've been talking about some bigger concepts. Manifest little things like the lights are all going to be green getting to work that day. But don't be disappointed if it doesn't happen doesn't mean you didn't do a good job. Maybe there was some other reason that it didn't happen that way. That's okay. But maybe practice with the one light. But really feel, don't in the back of your mind say, well, it's probably not going to happen. It's going to be red. Well, that is going to be red. So really feel confident about that or... I've done that driving to the airport and if we left a little late that the traffic is going to open up, time is going to slow down for me and it does and I make it to the airport on time. So it can be little things and those are great things to practice. Things that don't have consequences if they don't come true, but just be gentle with yourself. It takes practice. It takes practice knowing in our conscious languaging I talked about painting the picture, write down what you want to manifest. Here's a really good practical tip. If you write down what you want to manifest, you can read it and say, are there any wishy-washy words in there? Is this future-oriented? Because you have to, when you're manifesting, you want to make sure you're writing as if it's already come true. I am living somewhere, not I want to live somewhere. Those kind of things. So make sure that it's really action-oriented, that it's already come true. And that'll really help practice manifesting so that you make sure that your languaging is happening in alignment with co-creating with the universe. And I think we always forget, have an aura regression session. They are so transformative in ways that I can't even put into words. I've helped so many people from addictions to even we are able to heal on an energetic level, missing organs. I had a client, they had surgery and they were missing, I'm not going to name the organ, 
but their body, because we worked on that energetically, made made it so that this organ was still functioning for them. And when they went to another healer, the healer said, oh, you're, this part of your organ's working great, was listing, and they're like, hold on, I don't have that. How is that, if that organ is missing, that it is working perfectly fine? Sometimes in the quantum world, you are able to heal the unhealable because we're looking at things in a different way and we're asking source to make it happen. And it's taking that moment in time to make that happen that then your body system starts working in the proper way that it needs to. So have a regression session. We can clear all those negative timelines, those inorganic timelines, and put yourself on a higher organic timeline. And once you're you're there, it is so much easier to manifest. You know, I manifested before, but now I'm realizing as I go on in helping people heal, it's happening quicker and quicker. And I'm grateful for all the clients that I had and for those that are coming to me. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up. Thank you, because our whole intent with this podcast is to help people raise their vibration. And I had gotten to a certain point spiritually and energetically, and I just felt like I couldn't get past that point. And until I had an aura hypnosis regression session, it started clearing things I wasn't even aware of. And once our bodies and vessels are clear of trauma, past life, entities, whatever is going on, and nothing's, it's not like it's bad. It's just things that are going on that are blocking you potentially from manifesting. So that's a really good point that energetically, the more that we can heal ourselves, and Don and I are just facilitators of these self-healing techniques. You are doing the healing. We're not healing you. We are helping facilitate the process. You can find both of our websites for services if you're interested on our embracethespiritual.com website. So check that out. and. We'd love to see you on a session because life and the collective is so much better when we're all manifesting. We're all living in that higher vibration. And since energy is neither created or destroyed, all potentials already exist. There is no time. We all can tap in to the potential that you want to co-create with the universe. Beautiful. I love it. And that's, we all need to jump on that timeline so we can all be creator beings and manifest what we want. And love to all that are listening. This was heart opening for me. Thank you. And we also have on our website, we've created a new form that we'd love to hear from you listeners on manifesting. Tell us your successes. We want to hear it. We'll share them on our podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Join us next episode as we talk about the Akashic Records and learn what kind of information can be accessed in the records and how it can help you in your everyday life. Follow, subscribe, and share Embrace the Spiritual on all podcast streaming services, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Go to EmbraceTheSpiritual.com for additional content and a list of upcoming episodes. To book an aura regression or raw Reiki session, contact Dawn on her website, alchemy-sacredsound.com, and Michelle on her website at energeticembrace.com. Infinite love and gratitude. Thank you for joining us.